Hello! Today I wanted to talk about realism and CG. If you've ever scrolled through a Blender forum online, you'll see a lot of people posting renders and asking for advice on how to achieve realism. And you can almost always boil the advice in the comments down to a few repeat offenders. Add dust, add scratches, add fingerprints, volumetrics, dirt on the lens, camera shake, shallow focus, and so on and so on. And while these things can be indicators of realism, if you're making a product render and you put scratches and smudges all over the surface of a phone, for instance, that's not going to get you very far. And besides, you can add all of those things and still have a fake looking render. Whereas if I film my phone on my desk, you can tell that this is real despite there being no scratches and smudges on the surface of the screen. So what does that tell us about realism? And how do we achieve it? If you were to ask a painter or a sculptor what constitutes realism, I don't think they would say fingerprints or scratches. I think they would say observation. This is a photo of the Taking of Christ, a Caravaggio painting which hangs in the National Gallery in Dublin, and it is a masterpiece of observation. The metal highlights on the suit of armour, the specularity on the hair, the lighting, the cloth, the skin, the eyes. What really impresses me when I see a painting like this is not just the mastery of so many tools and practices, and the ability to use those to portray these beautifully observed details, but actually the ability to observe the details to begin with. So you wanna make a realistic render in Blender? It begins with observation. So go outside, walk your dog, watch the sunrise, notice the world around you, and pay attention to it and bring those observations to your work. And when you sit down to work, make sure you're working from reference. Caravaggio liked to paint real people, casting them as historical figures in his paintings. The animators of The Lion King studied lions and other animals. World famous wildlife expert Jim Fowler came out to the studio and brought a few friends who made quite an impression on the artists. When I was beginning the modeling process on my film Good Pasture, I started by gathering all of these great reference photos of brutalist churches and other brutalist buildings around the world, and just studying them to see what I could learn. And this is crucial. If you've ever tried to draw someone sitting across from you, you'll know the incredible difficulty of trying to draw that person's unique pair of eyes, and not just draw what your brain thinks a pair of eyes look like. The same is true in modeling. Initially, I wanted the confessional in this film to match the brutalist vibe of the rest of the church, and I tried to model it without reference and ended up with this. Which is uh, awful. Now, I'm not a great modeler myself, so I asked my friend Alex Harvey, who's an amazing modeler, to just go in a completely different direction and, and try a more classical style of confessional. And I gave him three reference photos, and he produced this, which is just fantastic. Even without textures, this feels real. And this is a testament to those observational skills that I was talking about. You can see how he's taken parts from each photo and combined them in this really artful way to make something completely new. So use reference for modeling. Observe the form, the scale, the proportions, the large and small scale details, and you'll constantly be surprised and inspired by what you see. I recommend keeping a scale reference in the scene next to whatever you're modeling. This will help with a lot of things like lighting, camera settings, physics. It's a good habit to get into modeling at scale. Once you have your model, then it's time to think about textures. Now, I'm not a texture artist. I rarely use procedural textures, if I'm being honest. I just love to use image textures. I love to be able to see something in the world, snap a photo of it, and then bring it straight into Blender to manipulate. And the realism of what I can achieve using image textures tends to be far superior than what I can create procedurally. Now, by default, an image texture plugged into a principal BSDF doesn't scream realism, but within the principal BSDF shader, you have all these parameters that you can control to create the effect of almost any material. Try plugging the image texture into the roughness and controlling it with a color ramp. This maps the darkest part of an image to the most reflective value and the brightest parts of an image to the roughest value. By adjusting these sliders, you can bring out parts of the image that you want to be reflective and adjust the value to whatever works for you. Try plugging that image texture into the height input on a bump map to derive some fake surface variations from the texture. 
Observe the way those variations interact with light and adjust to taste. The coat setting can create the appearance of a plasticine layer over a material, whereas the metallic setting can be used to make shiny surface areas look like metal. Where a painter like Vermeer had to mix paints with masterful precision to create the effect of light passing through skin, we only have to adjust the subsurface scattering slider from 0 to 1. So once again, observation is key here, but also artistic taste. This could pass for concrete, but so too could this. During this process, you'll need to make informed decisions about what material properties are correct for your scene. And one essential component in helping to make those decisions is the lighting. Now, I covered lighting in my last video, so I won't go too in depth on the topic here, but in my opinion, it is the most important individual component of creating a realistic image, and I think it's largely overlooked. The difference between this and this is lighting. And as I covered in my last video, an important component of this look is asking yourself, if I were really on set setting up lights here, where would I put them and how would I rig them? So watch films, uh, study photography and lighting diagrams from the great cinematographers and see how they achieve realism and ask yourself what you can learn from that. Let's look at some shots from my film Good Pasture and compare some early versions with finalized or close to finalized shots to see what we can observe. This shot of the glass cruets was interesting because you can feel in this early version that the glass doesn't quite feel like glass and the wine doesn't quite feel like wine. So those materials required careful dialing in to achieve realism. One useful thing for materials that refract light like this is that this value, the index of refraction, which is the amount the light bends that passes through the object, has a real world value depending on the material. Water has a refractive index of around 1.33, wine is a little higher, and glass is in or around 1.5 depending on the type of glass. So correcting those values help the light to interact realistically with the materials. Dialing in that subsurface scattering effect that we talked about added a lot. You can see the light penetrating the skin in a really realistic way. And adding the hairs on the back of the hand with a particle system that really helped to add some fine detail. To do this, I modeled some simple hairs, gave them a translucent material, placed them in a collection, weight painted the back of the hand, and then used that weight painting under the density settings of a particle system to distribute those hairs along the hand. For this close-up of the mop wiping bird shit off the floor of the church, I used that colour ramp technique to really bring out the wet stain on the floor where the priest has mopped, and I modelled some bird poop from a photo and used the shape keys to have it stretch and smudge and eventually disappear as the mop passes back and forth. For the mop itself, I attempted to model the tassels of the mop and use a cloth simulation to get this motion down, but I just could not replicate the complexity of that action that I had in my reference video. So I cheated. I took the reference video into After Effects, rotoscoped the mop from the background, and brought this into Blender as a video element which I could angle towards the camera in just the right way that it felt real. I did a similar thing in this shot of the match, using a video element of a flickering candle flame and parenting it to the match. And so to return to the initial advice of achieving realism where people say add fingerprints, add dust, add scratches, I think what they're really trying to say is observe your form and be detailed in your work. And I agree with that. And this speaks to another component of realism in CG or filmmaking, which is that at the end of the day, we're not painters. We are inheriting traditions of classic Hollywood filmmaking, run and gun indie filmmaking, old school animation, theater, and magic. And so the truth is that sometimes to make your audience believe that something is real, all you have to do is tell them that it is. Thanks for watching.